Hello everyone, I'm MCZ James, your host for the 2021 Engine Pitch and Polish program. Now, I've said this before, but honestly, I don't think I can say it enough. We wouldn't be here without the generous support of our sponsors. So, a big shout out and thank you goes to Engine Petroleum, our title sponsor, Nedbank, our gold sponsor, Raise Corp, the program organizer, and the Business Exchange, our venue sponsor. In our last episode, we saw the pitches from Modise and OJ, the first two contestants from the Green Group. By the end of tonight's episode, we would have seen all the pictures from the green group and find out which of them will be joining the others who have gone through to the next round. So last time we caught up with Yasmin Ali and got a glimpse of what the contestants have been learning. So tonight we're going to be catching up with some of our contestants and find out a bit more about the other part of the pitch and polish experience, the guiding. My guiding experience was, you know, we as entrepreneurs, we ended, we ended up being thrown into the deep end by ourselves. And then we arrived here without really knowing what's going on. And obviously, you know, you, you've got this excitement, yet you feel sort of out of your depth most of the time as an entrepreneur. And yet when I met Silas, it was wonderful. He immediately relaxed me and we focused on the financial aspects of the business. So within my time that I spent with him, it was like a crash course that I, for the first time, understood my business finances. The one thing I really loved the most about Joe was how she was able to steer me towards the right thinking without telling me actually. And it's just from a level of let's look at the numbers if this scenario happens. I know this is not just book knowledge that is coming here. This is actually someone that took me into consideration as a person, as an individual. And her questioning therefore is in my best interest. So I could immediately just relax, take in what she has to offer. Tendai was so amazing in terms of facilitating and fast tracking the sessions in order for me to catch up, but as well as also being patient and uh, allowing me to share with him my journey and him to sort of pinpoint on areas that I can improve. And I think that also added to the success of us going through to the next round. So he made it easy as ABC, which you know, for a non-financial person, because I'm a registered nurse, so finances is something that you're generally afraid of. Yet with him, it just brought a big bunch of reassurance and it made me excited to analyze my fear towards my finances and to really get to grips with that. If you are interested in, in reaching your best um, faster, um, if you are interested in growing into being, I think, a better version of who you are, it's definitely something to, to think of. Um, so looking at it holistically, guiding for me, to be honest, I would say it's more important than funding itself because if you have that knowledge, you will always find ways to maneuver um, issues around funding and whatnot. But I think the conversation currently in the entrepreneurship world is how everyone can access funding, but we don't talk much about the, the, the entrepreneurial education side of it, that you still need to know um, your business, you still need to understand that every decision is a financial decision, whether you are aware of it or not. You know? That brought it to a completely different level. And when I drove away here the first evening, my head was in a spin, yet it was wonderful to realize that, you know what, I can actually breathe. You can take it all in. You've got these experts, you're seeing them again tomorrow. And for me, it wasn't just about the final pitch. It was about what else and so much more that I took away to the business. It was really an excellent, very, very rapid learning curve that I experienced. Well, it certainly looks like our entrepreneurs are drawing immense value from their guiding experience. I'm still a bit sour that I don't get a guide too, but hey, we move. The show must go on, right? Before the battle commences, let me remind you who our judges are for this round. Back from Engine Petroleum is Zishan Abbas. Joining him is Monique Chinna from Nedbank and rounding up the panel is Alon Reyes from Reyes Corp. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet our first contestant. Kelete Lekwake is our youngest contestant and hails from Soshanguve. He is the owner of Password Kid. Good evening, Kelete. Jeez, you're young, huh? How old are you? Just turned 22. 22 and you're an entrepreneur? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since how old? Since I was 17 in 2017. That's when I finished my matric. Uh -huh. And you've been an entrepreneur since you were in matric or finished matric? A year after finishing matric, went to varsity, did my honors in software development. Okay. All right. Are you ready to pitch that business? More than ready. Okay. Will you walk to the mic? Kaleto, five, four, three, 
two, one, pitch and polish. Hello everyone, my name is Kele Zolo Gwako and I'm from Password Kid. A child goes missing every five hours in South Africa, with most of them being stolen from primary schools and ECD centres by strangers pretending to be parents or pretending to be sent by parents. The solution to the problem is the Password Kid mobile app, where parents can delegate people to trust to go and pick up the child from school. Whereby the trust will simply go to the school, hand over their ID card to the school admin. The school admin will then scan the trustee's ID card. If approved, the trust will then provide a one-time password. The parent will then receive an SMS that has the collector's details, the date, the time and the location. Our target markets are primary schools, ECD centers, daycares and so forth, whereby there are more than 25,000 of those in South Africa, with more than 12 million children attending school every single day. Our product is a monthly subscription product of 40 rents per month per learner, paid by the parent, which from only 1% of our potential market might be turning over around 4.8 million with a net income of around cool 22%. Myself and my co-founder are both software developers by profession and very passionate entrepreneurs. We are the current winners of Uber Tech for Safety. We have managed to secure a few partnerships with companies that operate within the educational sector. With the money that we are about to win into this competition, it will be used to actually raise awareness, and, um, develop our iOS product, and also invest into our KPEX and OPEX. And also with that said, to actually save more children across the world and across the country. Thank you all for listening. Sure, and you did that with five seconds left. Well done, Colette. So, well, from one young person to another, Monique. Oh, thank you. Uh, Kelezo, has your business model adapted during COVID? Because most of the schools were closed. So have you pivoted in any way? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, well, we did. We did struggle a bit in COVID because most children end up going to school, but it didn't really affect that much into our business model because bear in mind that most parents are labor workers. So by the very least, children has to go to school. So there were a few children that were going to school. It did affect our model a bit, but we still managed to actually make a little bit out of it. So also with that said, we are currently developing a product which is that gets to accommodate also a safety safety measures to children, which is a teddy bear. Mm. We can't have another pitch now. I have to. Uh, <laughs> um, young man, 22 years old. That's amazing. Eh? Thank you. That's great. Um, I want to ask you, so how does it actually work? You say you want to be the Uber of, of children's safety. How does the model actually work? So can I subscribe on your app to go pick up kids and it gets verified or how does it really work? Okay, so let's assume you are a parent, right? You have a child. So you are held up here in work. You want somebody to go and pick up your child. Just get to the app, delegate that person using their ID number. That person goes to the school, hand over their ID, num their ID card to the school admin. School admin scan the ID card directly for the app, from the app. If that ID number is not delegated, the, p the, school, the school admins won't hand the child over to that person. If verified, there's a one-time password on OTP that, is, that the, the, the person who's coming to collect the child receives from the parent. Okay. So the parent will receive an SMS. Yeah, just, and, and how many people are subscribed to your app at the moment? A thousand plus, yes, currently. A thousand? A thousand. And they're paying how much a month? 40 rands. 40 per rand. Per lena, yeah. So you're turning over 40,000 rand? 40 with the gross of 75, which is around 29, 75%, which is around 29K, and the net of 8,800. 8, 8, 8, and, and how did you get those thousand? Um, we have been doing walk-ins to, to schools, to homes that has children. And also we kind of have, like I mentioned the pitch, we have partnerships with eTravers, which is an online learning company, which they are the ones who manage to get us closer to our, to our customers. Hmm. Very impressive. Kaleto, um, thanks for coming through. A very impressive young man. I wish I had your confidence at uh, your age. Yeah, fantastic. You may leave. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Wow, I really wish I had the know-how that Kaleto has when I was his age. But has he done enough to see off the other contestants in the green group? We'll have to find out at the end of this episode. We still have one more pitch, so let's get after it. Meet Buntle Chola from Johannesburg in Gauteng, the proud owner of Bar Health. Buntle, welcome. Thank you very much, Alan. You are, I think you're the only lady in this uh, green group. Is that right? 
the rose amongst the thorns. Ro ah, another rose. <laughs> another ah, rose. Another rose. It's nice to have so many roses. Have you been preparing for this pitch? I have. I'm looking forward to it. A lot of the work that we've been doing over the past few days is going to be seen and tested today. So I really am looking forward to it. And what are we seeing there on the table there? So over here, we've got some samples for you guys. Um, we've got a few products in our range. We've got fruit and vegetable juices over here. Um, this is one of our most popular flavors. It's a cucumber flavor. We've got carrot. We've got some energy balls for you guys. I know you've had a very long day, so this will pick up your energy levels. It's only fruits, nuts, and seeds in there, so no additives. And then we have our fruit juice range over here. But the one that I really want you guys to have is this, to boost your immune system. This is a vitality shot. Great. Well, we'll be trying that afterward. Great. Bontle. Five, four, three, two, one. Pitch and polish. Good evening, judges. My name is Bunze Tsole, and I am the founder of a company called Bar Health. We are a company that is focused on changing the narrative of healthy access to healthy food by working with small-scale farmers to provide delicious, healthy fast food alternatives. Growing up in a home where my parents insisted on providing healthy food, I realized during my long hours in the retail market that there is a gap between the access to healthy food and the provision of that food. And that sparked the idea of Bar. Since 2017, we've grown our revenue over 55% year on year. This has been done through our online sales platform, through retail stores like Spa and Food Lovers Market, as well as through restaurants and cafes. We currently use uh, independent distributors, but we aim to work on our access to larger retail markets. And funders, this is where your investment will help us access these markets. We'll be investing in machinery as well as our compliance, but more than that, we'll be investing in our marketing to build the brand. Not only will your investment assist the small scale farmers positively, but it will also impact us and help us achieve the dream that we've been working towards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bontle. Okay, well, I have to start with the rose. Wow. <laughs> I love your energy, and that was that was really really motivating. Um, it, it's clear that you've it's really aligned to what you believe in, so your, your products and 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 how you've grown up. So it's, it's really great. What I want to know is, I looked at your website, and you had a company called Dipalisa that does uh, floral arrangements. How does that link to your current juice offering? So that was something that we wanted to bring into the brand because we work with um, a lot of other. Um, plant, so, so like um, your mint and all of that, we ended up going to the floral market a lot, um, getting those little mint trees, and that's where we developed the interest into the floral market. Is it something that you focus on, or is it just a side? This is the core of the is business. That the core focus? Yes. Okay. Tell me, where do you position yourself? So it really is about creating a platform um, for health. And beverages, right, is, is one of the ways to market that we are using. But health is at the core of the brand and every product we bring out, for instance, even with the energy balls, um, it will rest on the basis of healthy fast food alternatives. Bortle, two questions from, from me. The manufacturing plant right now, is it yours or are you outsourcing that? No, uh, that's still in our control. It's your control. Yes, yes. Um, number two, what is the shelf life of these products and my real question is how much wastage do you have so um, that's a very good question Alon so with the energy balls we've got quite a long shelf life uh, that's three months uh, these have a 40 this, the fruit juice have a 45 day shelf life and the fresh juices have a 7 to 10 day shelf life but with the part of the equipment that you'll be getting for us is a pasteurizing machine so it takes this 7 to 10 day shelf life uh, from that to about a 60 day shelf life. So that's gonna also assist us in getting this to market with as little um, wastage as possible. Bundle, thank you for your pitch. Uh, you are free to go. Thank you very much, judges. Well, the judges seem to be quite impressed with Bundle's pitch, but are a bit concerned that the market that she's playing in is quite saturated. It's going to be a tough call for them. Now, I've been here in studio while the contestants deliver their pitches, so I know that it's not easy to go up in front of an intimidating panel of judges and try sell yourself or your business. Maybe you disagree, and if so, I invite you to enter as a 2021 Engine Pitch and Polish Wildcard contestant. The wildcard will go up against our two finalists in the last round and have a shot at that first place prize worth 1 
million rand. If you think you have what it takes, then go to pitchandpolish.com and submit a wildcard entry form. Make sure you save your unique entry number somewhere safe because you'll need it to answer the wildcard questions that are asked at the end of each episode. And remember, all the questions are posted on the Engine Pitch and Polish website. And you can go back to previous ones and answer those ones too. Here's tonight's wildcard question. As the youngest contestant, how old is Galezzo? As the youngest contestant, how old is Galezzo? All right, it's time to find out which two contestants from the green group will be going through to the second round. Over to the judges. Good evening, contestants. All right, let's uh, start uh, with you, Modise. I think what you're doing is so, so important. First of all, to bring services into the township economy. It's such a big drive that government is pushing for right now. And, you know, and the fact that it's also in healthcare, particularly at, at this time in our, in the global history, I think is so important. But what I think confuses the judges is that, um, you know, why 30%? You know, we, the question was asked, you know, why aren't you using your own money in terms of marketing more? So great business, some issues. Can they be polished out is the question in the pitch and polish. OJ, OJ, you, you, you are a, a teacher through and through. It just comes, you know, you can see your presence, absolute amazing presence in front of us. You know, we, we've, we've, we felt, you know, we felt taught and educated by you. You can absolutely see that you, you love what you do. And as an entrepreneur, that's one of the most important things is to have that passion and, and relationship with what you, what you do. The business side, we went to clear on, you know, whether the 650,000 Rand would, uh, would be well used by you. But do you have the ability to learn and get polished in pitch and polish? We think so. I'm going to ask the two of you to step forward, both of you. Um, Kelezzo, Bontle, could you two step forward? Sure, Kelezzo, I, 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 you spoke so fast, I, I, I really, so fast, but with such style, I felt I could hear you even though I couldn't. Like you, I, you were like singing and dancing. I just wanted to understand what you, you said, and it was only in the clarifying questions when you calmed down that we sort of understood what you do. But your confidence at your age is unbelievable, and the fact that you've you've built uh, what you have. But there's a contradiction when we saw we looked at your submission and we looked at the numbers that you submitted and the numbers you presented. There's quite a contradiction between those numbers. So can we trust you? Can you be polished, Vonte? You are. Talking about polished, you are so polished. You, you win all sorts of things. This is your, your thing. But we also felt your passion for what you do, just like OJ. There's a deep passion. We felt connected that you connected to your product. But there's a lot of competition out there, a huge amount of com competition. In fact, in, in the thousands of entries, there must have been maybe 10 or 15 similar um, juice and health products such as yours. Having said all that, the two people that will be going forward are Bontle and Kelezzo. <laughs> mm. All right, you may leave. Thank you. Man, I'm so glad that I don't have to decide who goes home and who goes through, eh? Congratulations to our spring chicken, Galetto, and our health foodie, Bunse, who we'll see back here in round two. To OJ and Modise, we wish you nothing but the best as you continue on in your entrepreneurial journeys. And of course, we'll get to meet a contestant from the Yellow Group. So, make it a date, me and you, back here on Tuesday night, 7 p.m. You don't want to miss a single thing. For me, I'm CZ James, and the rest of the team here at Engine Pitch and Polish, it's a good night. I think this was a learning curve. 
and there's a lot of that I've learned and that I'm going to take home from the program for the three days that I've spent here. This is not the end and the, the, the journey continues and as it is, my, 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 my vision, I still keep on my vision whereby in the next few years I need to be having a few branches throughout the country. I think my pitch was good. Uh, I feel I feel confident. Uh, obviously, in retrospect, uh, there's a few things that I think I should have changed. I didn't hear the other guys, you know, what they what they are selling. The milestones that's that's been set out um, still remain the same. The Malin Rand would have made it, you know, come to pass, but faster. But uh, it's not the end of the road. Um, we just keep on going on and um, keep on trying. And yeah.